Hey, 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 I'm Gare. I'm infatuated with Mescal. This is my man, Alex. Yes, sir. My name is Deo, and this is Mescal, Mescal Talk. Talk. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Three bottles, us two guys, this movie, and of course you. Mm -hmm. Today we're watching The Birds, or I think Birds, or I don't know if it's like plural or not, but uh, by the very famous Alfred Hitchcock. Yes, yes, yes. Classic amongst classics. Mm -hmm. Number one OG director. OG amongst OGs. Good man, good man. Yes, of course. And I think, we're not sure, but I think, think this is colorized. We think it was originally black and white. I'm, yeah, I'm almost Pretty positive, sure. yeah. In the box, so I have the box set over there and uh, in the Lovely inserts. Lovely velvet box set. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Shout out to my homie that uh, got me that for my birthday one day. But, um, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, it had like uh, black and white pictures of it, so I'm pretty sure they like what do you call it? Redeveloped the film, colorized. Yeah, Those yeah. Colorized, what they called it. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're in for a treat, though. Yeah, it looks good. It doesn't. I remember some early colorized movies looked fucked up. It looked like mm -hmm. they practiced, you know, like, like some kid colored on the like film. <laughs> and this I, looks pretty natural. And the way they used to like light things back in the day, like they knew it was going to be in black and white, so like they knew that. It wasn't going to be in color, obviously. Because yeah, yeah, higher contrast and like whatnot. So it would look weird if it had color in it. But Hitchcock just like paid so much good attention to it. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, it just looks amazing. It looks really good. It do, it do, it do. We're halfway through the movie, or maybe like one third in. If anyone wants to watch along with us, <laughs> the chick's playing piano. That's your cue. She's very beautiful. Chew it up with us. Ride with us. Vibe with us. <laughs> Vibe with us, please. <laughs> Hang out with us. Drink with us. Mm -hmm. We don't like being alone. We're here for you. Hell yeah. Hells yeah. Guess we can get to the poem. Yeah, yeah. Pour Let's it do it. Up. I'm super excited for these three bottles. I don't think I've ever tried any of these, so. Uh, the middle one you tried. Oh, word? But okay. um, the two, the, the, the end pieces here are new acquirers mm -hmm. into the collection. <laughs> We do one of these. Woo! I love that pop sound. I was like, pop. You know something's good's about to happen when you hear that sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just drink with us, we, guys. I'm not gonna free pour this time. No. Last time, yeah, I we got too wrecked because I was free <laughs> pour and everything. Like, yeah, was, I, I had the jigger out, but for some reason, I just didn't use it. We were like, fuck that shit. But I think at one point we tried it out, or we uh, eyed it out, and I looked. It was exactly the right too. So you had a pretty good hand. Maybe. But I was pretty lit last time, so uh, we're going to try not to get too faded this time. Not Just, too faded, but you know, you yeah, get faded. Tuesday recording, Tuesday booze day. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, who we knows? didn't have any tacos today, though, unfortunately. <sighs> In L.A. Wait, which one's this one? So we got, I guess I should do this. We got this bottle of Koch. Mm. This is a classic brand in uh, Mezcal. This is a, a, an OG brand. Magui Espedin, it says. Yes, Magui. That's mm. uh, that means that just simply means uh, agave. Magui. Oh, I see. So Espedin, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, my first time having buying bottles from these. I've had them out a few times. Obviously, I cracked these already and I've tasted them. But the first time I've owned them is is these particular bottles. Mm -hmm. I did get a nice sale, a rare sale on these items. K and L wines. Shout out. Mm -hmm. This is uh, we'll talk more about the pricing, but this was this bottle is probably usually forty five or something like that. But I got it for thirty, which is pretty good. I was pretty happy about that. That's really good. Yeah, yeah that's the cheapest you'll ever get a mezcal bottle, probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we can talk about it. Whatever. So this one is a different one by the same brand, Koch, right here. But this bottle I got for fifty, Ooh. and it's usually over a hundred, like one ten ish. So that was a really good deal on that one. I was pretty happy. To, wow, we are yeah, in for a treat. That whole line was uh, on sale at K&L a couple weeks ago. Man. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a treat. All right. Salute. Salute, my friend. Cheers. Okay. Soft. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of a bite toward the end there. Feel pretty some, standard. Feel some, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've got to I've got to take a second to sip though because the first one always tastes weird or different for me. <laughs> yeah, I get a, certainly a little alcohol in the back of my tongue as it, it goes down. Oh wow! But uh, you know, not like 
a burn per se, but some heat. Well, on the second taste, I I taste um, sweetness on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, like uh, some plant sweetness, like. Mm hmm. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, I really it's like good. that one. I would say it's a. It, has it a, definitely tastes that that agave like mm -hmm. plant, you know, like has a little bit less pepper, a little bit less black pepper than some espadins tend to have a little bit of a yeah like a peppery vibe. This one has a little less pepper to me. Still a burn, less peppery, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's good. Very Certainly, good. you know, for the price, it's it's real good. Mm -hmm. oh my. If anyone was getting into mezcal, this would be a really good one, I would say. Yep, yep. and it's certainly inexpensive enough to use for cocktails mm -hmm. and not feel like you're fucking up. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's very delicious, very delicious. I like, I like. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Would you rather have... It's like a little creamy mm -hmm. in the beginning, like mm -hmm. the mouthfeel and then the softness of the flavor has a little bit, not like ice cream. No, like no, like no. creaminess to like the texture. Yeah, it's a little viscous. Very delicious, though. Hey, uh, Would you like this one out, or uh, uh, <clears throat> Pedro Hernandez? Oh, and it says that on the bottom. Yes, that's the mescalero. That's why I and love San mezcal. Baltazar. Ooh, I don't know this word, but I'll go for Guela Vila. Um, that's oh, in a town in Oaxaca. Mm. And both of those um, Koch bottles were done by the same Mescalero, Pedro Hernandez. Shout out to Pedro. We got Pedro. I don't think we shout out the Mescaleros enough. Um, they're not on every bottle, but they're on a lot of bottles. Sometimes mm -hmm. we shout them out, sometimes we don't. I think we should get into the habit of that. We'll do the price and the, the, the guy, if it's on there, and the town and the agave. Try to give you as many details as we can without being too boring with the details <laughs> yeah yeah i mean so far there's a lot of adjectives going on i wish uh i wish in the future you'll probably be able to like taste the same thing that we're tasting i don't know there's some type of new technology or maybe you'll just buy the bottle new ahead technology of technology yeah gonna teleport yes <laughs> like the smell of vision <laughs> into your hand that would be pretty hype if we could teleport you know, people could mail order and we would teleport <laughs> stuff into there. 3D print the mezcal. Like, wow, <laughs> there for you. Yeah, just. Like, <laughs> nah, that'd be incredible. If they like Venmo us, like in the moment, then we like teleport. We have a little teleportation box that we just put a copy in and it goes to them. That'd be pretty sick. I mean, that's what's holding us back from like Zoom. Teleportation guests. is holding us back. You're, You're right. Dude. If we had teleportation, <laughs> we'd be so much further along. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I think we're gonna have to if we ever do guests, they have to be in person. The Zoom shit is is, is gonna be tough. I was thinking about that the other day. I mean, there, there's certainly some value in some Zoom guests that are like have something extra to bring to the table, mm -hmm. not just to have a guest. Yeah, with, yeah. with an uh, opinion, like mm -hmm. a, somebody that was like really some you know expert in. Mm -hmm. the movie we were watching or in or the mess you know, or... yeah somebody that was worth the uh the vibe of doing it for zoom but not just anybody you know? yeah or if we end up like having some like ongoing discussion that someone has something something to say like i don't mind you got something that. to say you got something to say come Hit and say it to up. our face <laughs> <laughs> or you could email us at mescaletalk at gmail.com very very true <laughs> or come see us at k-town like we'll fight you right now <laughs> if you need <laughs> So anything new in life, man? What is new in life? What is new? Um, Tuesday, June something, late June. Late June. I, I want to know a uh, wine country the tour tasting thing. Really? The weekend. At a, First time ever. A winery? Um, five. You went to five, five wineries. wineries one day. Wow. Temecula, which is like, you know, wine country. It's, uh, I guess, south west of of here southwest oh of really us. okay how was it it was cool it was good, yeah you know like, so all definitely. five of them were in temecula yes there's okay. like a fuckload in temecula i didn't mm. i'd heard people like rapping about it but i didn't know like people rapping about temecula i mean talking oh okay i was like damn rappers really out <laughs> here representing like yo catch oh, me in temecula, temecula. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 No, I mean, I just, I'd known that it was like wine country to a certain extent, but I didn't know the the breadth of it until I was there. And we're like, even as we were approaching the first one they were meeting people at, we're passing all these. And I'm like, damn, damn, mm -hmm. damn. There had to be like 20 plus wineries out wow, there. Like, it had to be. There were so many. What would you say is your favorite out of all of them? 
Um, towards the end, I was hella faded. Oh <laughs> yeah, so it's hard five, to get it. Five, you know, five wineries in, but the one Danza Danza de Sol mm-hmm. was probably my favorite. So I tasted five or six there. You taste like you get the small tastings, so you're getting like flights everywhere of like five or six tastes. Um, and I think pretty much everything I tasted at Donza I really liked. And I bought two bottles there. It was the only one I bought any bottles at. Like, no word. So of the five, it sticks out as like the one. Man, it's good. I mean, I I'm love not wine. like Mister Wine. Obviously, like I like mezcal, but um, I like wine. Wine's cool. Like I'm certainly not an aficionado by any means, but like if it tastes, I know a little bit about wine. I know more than like some people for sure, but I know what mostly, I like. Yeah, I know what I like. I'm mostly into reds, but Same. I like some whites. But I mean, I drank primarily reds. I drank a lot of them. I got a bottle of uh, Sangiovese, which is like an Ooh, Italian wine. That sounds nice. Sounds delicious. Feeling. It was a nice, you know, Sunday venture in the wine country, you know, mm-hmm. outdoorsy. It's almost all outdoor, like patio seating, kind of like chill out vibes. Gotcha, gotcha. Very summery, very California y. Were you walking through like the grapevines and stuff? You can. In a okay. couple of them we did. Some of them we didn't bother. Oh, wow. But um, a couple of them we definitely did. Damn, that sounds very peaceful. It was peaceful. You heard it through the grapevines. It's a slice of serenity. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 something to cherish in the middle of like LA. LA is like could be super uh, hustle and bustle, could be yeah. a little annoying sometimes. So like getting up there where the air is good, the air is better at least. Yeah, it's super important nowadays. It was kind of funny how casually they just everybody smoking cigarettes. I know, man. Like, it makes it me want to smoke a cig right now. <laughs> Shit, not me. This mezcal is not smoky enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's badass. Like. I feel like uh, back then everyone smoked cigs and everyone just aged way worse. <laughs> so, sure. yeah. Wow. But it's just like the casualness of it too. Like, cause besides doing it, it's like nobody was sensitive about like, oh, don't show kids that or don't do this. Like, well, they didn't know. Got like a yeah. bottle of whiskey next to him and a cigarette practically. Like she's drinking, right? Yeah. No one's acting. No one ever acts drunk too. You know, in the movie. Like, you got to be wasted if you're drinking, like, three or four glasses of whiskey, like, a day at least. Right. I mean, on, on set, I mean, I'm sure some people were really drinking, but some people probably have, like, iced tea. And yeah, like, some apple juice or something like that. <laughs> but, apple like, juice. a lot of times it's, like, in the morning they wake up, they go to work, and then they crack open, like, the decanter right away. Dun, 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 dun. Wow, here we go. This movie starts getting <laughs> wild. starting to come out. I really like this movie Science. a lot. It's been so so long since I've seen this movie. It had to be like twenty years or something. I've been Damn, a long really? Long time. Damn. Mm. Well, yeah. this mango's very. I've seen delicious. a lot of Hitchcock stuff in the past, but until last year or so, when when you got this, it's the first time I'm like revisiting a lot of these. What was that one? We watched the the uh, the window one. What's that called? We watched that rear window. Yeah, the beginning. Hell of the yeah. Pandemic, we yeah, watched yeah, that. yeah. The re- and that was actually that one was the first time I'd ever seen it. I'd really? never seen it straight through. Oh, I'd seen bits and pieces, but that was the first time I saw it straight up. That's a true classic. Definitely that one. a true classic. Yeah. I don't know um, if you're aware, but recently, like very recently, in the last month or two, there's a Netflix homage to that, to Rear Window. It sucks. Really? It definitely sucks. I watched it like a week or two ago. Um, it's a new one? A new, a new well, movie. That's It's not a remake, but it's an homage. It's like there's they take a lot of uh, elements from it, but it's totally... Um, new a story different plot line okay and a, and a modern it's current world modern times and a, mm. a totally different plot line a female uh, protagonist but there's a lot of uh, parallelism and clear homage to it and even in the beginning of the movie um she ha- it's on tv in the background oh something. yeah like you know so they're, gotcha. they're not hiding it they're not they're yeah. not just like ripping it off they're like saying like this is like an homage to it have you ever seen that one movie disturbia with uh, shia labeouf I did not. I did not. I remember the uh, the graphic, like the cover graphic. The, uh, for it. I think it had binoculars on it or something like that. Or it was, too was that big. in the in that world too? Yeah, I think they they uh, I think they like pretty much. They didn't have any like direct homages towards it, but like the, it's the same type of plot line. Definitely mid two thousands vibe to it. But uh, yeah, it's it's funny how like a, an old story is like timeless in that way. Like that's that's that movie will be like etched in stone forever. Plus it's easy I think to key in on emotions like that because mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people are nosy. 
You no, know, or if true. you're not nosy, yeah. you have you know somebody that's nosy. True. And like so, someone's probably listening right now. We so got the like windows anybody open. Could, yeah, anybody <laughs> could like kind of identify with that. Uh-huh. I, 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 even more so in the modern one. That was the, in the beginning of the that Netflix thing. I don't remember the name of it to be honest, but mm-hmm. in the beginning of that, I before I decided it was corny. Once it got more into the meat of it, and I was like, oh, this is corny. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the beginning, I kind of was like, it re- it did make me think about like, oh shit, like motherfuckers like be watching you. And like, you don't yeah. think about like how much people potentially could watch you if they really had nothing better to do. Yeah. All you need to do is have a screw loose pretty much or to like a lot of free time on your hands mm-hmm. and living in proximity of some people that maybe aren't ultra, you know, buttoned up with their like windows in their life you know mm-hmm. man yeah i hope no one's spying on us because <laughs> they've definitely seen like, me walk around in my underwear <laughs> yeah. yeah but i don't i mean you know if that makes them excited so be it i don't yeah. unfortunately we're not doing anything that exciting we're not no. like, murdering people and hiding the bodies no yet. jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> no 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 well no. you know like i've been like 18 and hookers over at once like there's nothing no, that exciting no. going on Ten so they most. can spy on us and like <laughs> i mean i really don't give a fuck like i know our windows are I mean, open i'll put out a tip jar yeah you know, like, yeah i mean just... if you want to keep on seeing me with my underwear you could just literally <laughs> look out look into our apartment probably i just don't care at all it's just too hot sometimes you know fuck she is getting into them steamy times a couple oh, yeah. more weeks we're gonna hit the peak dude that's gonna fucking suck <laughs> we're gonna be like recording this podcast in a fucking sauna pretty much <laughs> them sweaty boys <laughs> this one tastes like sweat <laughs> this one tastes really like, like i taste a lot of saline oh wait that's the <laughs> oh. salty sweat on my lip <laughs> Oh, I actually did go to a Wee Spa the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. First time since I'm a spend. Pand- it did yep. reopen. I'm assuming recently. Yeah, so they opened before just for like I think appointments and stuff, but now they're open to the general public. Mm. General pop. Was it packed? Uh, not when I went. I went after this party, uh, the Good Society so party. It was late night. Yeah, I got there around like one, I think. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, dude, I was just chilling. I just sweated out all the fucking alcohol. And uh, I just laid there for a little bit. I sort of like spent the night there too. It was sort of nice. Nice. It's, I think it's like thirty five bucks nowadays. But uh, yeah, I hit the. I salt think sauna. overnight they charge more than. Daytime. Yeah, I think it's like ten bucks more. But that's not still not bad at all because crazy. There's less people overnight. Yeah, and it's unlimited time basically. Yeah, I think I had to leave by eleven. Oh, did you? Eleven a.m. Yeah, but that's perfect amount of I time. I mean, yeah. that is overnight though i mean that's yeah, cheaper than yeah. a hotel oh like if you sure. really yeah. like if you're really in a jam and you just needed to go somewhere to like you couldn't drive or like you're fucked up and like mm-hmm. 35 bucks you're getting a little spa treatment and you like you know sleep off about the it. alcohol yeah i've thought about it i was like damn like why even go to a hotel when that's when that exists yeah i've definitely heard people talking about doing that before. out of towners mm-hmm. doing that before the thing is like though like this is like a world-class joint like if i had yeah. to like visit some other random city like i don't know if i'd go to just any other like i don't know if you could find a 24 hours yeah I that's mean, not a thing rare. like that's even here like there's only i think one other one that does that it's not like yeah every all the Kore- there's tons of korean spas but yeah. only who i think to do overnight the korean bathhouses <laughs> man it's like yeah they know how to take care of themselves they got like all those like fucking treatments and shit facial treatments or korean like korean makeup and like korean like face shit you know like they really take care of themselves a little too much though i think yeah yeah <laughs> seems like it you should pull back well i mean like <laughs> you ever see those beauty stores and shit like that and they have like all the masks and they have like all like they really give a fuck about that shit to the point where it's like the plastic surgery and stuff like that, and like, I don't know, we don't have to get that deep into it, but <laughs> I, mean, I would say, I would venture to say that it's you know anyone. I mean, people, everyone's plastic surgery crazy these days. Like, yeah, you, either you are. I mean, anyone as in ethnicity, you, you know, like, yeah, it's yeah. not like. Mm-hmm. If but you're like into it, you're into it. Like, but there's like a Korean plastic surgery look the same way that there's like a white person, like you know, like Kardashian. Yeah, like, yeah. Look. yeah. All right. All yeah, right. it's interesting. It's like weird. They have like the pointy chin and the big eyes and shit. It's like an anime character almost. <laughs> That's what I just <laughs> anime character with a Brazilian butt left. So what do you think about this? 
We do it. Uno mas. All right. We do it. We do it. Yeah. So uh, my thought that. process here is we're doing Espadin, Espadin. Then this one's not an Espadin. And then we'll circle back to compare the two from the same brand. So okay. So comparing two Espadins from different brands. And, and this then we'll is, uh, Tabala. That is a Maja Couche, Whoa. which is something you haven't had prior. Maja Couche. So we'll get it, Couche. Oh, this is, a, this is a favorite of ours. So, well, um, you've had this before, yep, not on yep. the show, but and then there no, was... No, I'm pretty sure we did, no? No, it was a different no. one oh, by this brand, it was a gold solid. one. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's the gold just for reference, but they're all yeah, different. Yeah. They're all the same artwork, mm-hmm. but they have, they're different towns and, and different uh, mescaleros, and they have different colors mm-hmm. so this is you know this purpley ready type joint here mm-hmm. yeah man this is one of my favorite brands but yeah new estra soledad dope brand I've had quite a few they have a good like i don't know maybe six or so i've certainly not tried them all but i've had quite probably three or four of their line very tasty products yeah yeah i love it man this is like the this is the height of the movie right now all the birds some serious bird attacks yeah they just smash through the windows and this is like i don't know it's not called cga right that's way 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 before before. computers these are real birds but i mean i think it's like they flew like how do they get like because it's half practical half like overlaid extras yeah yeah well and then some i don't think every single bird is real like some mm-hmm. i think it's a mix of all kinds of stuff going on but i think they f- they flew a bunch of birds in front of a white screen and like opaqued it you know into it sort of you know or what do you call it like because they didn't have green screening back then they didn't have right, chroma yeah, keying they have, so yeah, they, they may have, have just done it right over a white thing and then overlaid both the films on top you know maybe cuz I, I know there's real birds in it there's fake birds in it and then there's something Some else kind of you know, impression, there yeah, has to yeah. be another element to it i remember i read in the booklet that comes in your little box set that the one scene i don't think we're at it yet but the one scene later on it's like a little bit more of a heightened scene where like the lead chick to be is like really getting attacked like yeah. hardcore yeah, yeah that they and they wouldn't be able to do this today because yeah. of animal rights but they like tied the birds they had like little strings like super thin strings that you wouldn't be able to see on uh. film tied to the bird's feet on her jacket yeah and like all these so the birds were literally attached to her shirt yeah. and like fucking her up because they're mad you know what i mean they're, they're yeah. they can't fly right and she was uh super scratched up and messed up and uh she was like super stressed out and they had to like stop filming for a week or two for her to like be not like emotionally distressed god damn yeah i mean when i said he was a good man that was was a lie (laughs) his cock is sort of a piece of shit though for real he's got a lot of mixed uh, reports and stories i mean he did he did that too what's today today's version Mm -hmm. of a piece of shit versus then's version of it there's two different things i mean a lot more flew a lot more was okay back then you know well he was a genius back then (laughs) he still is a genius but um it was completely justified there's lots of uh, geniuses that aren't the greatest people you know yeah not exclusive well like that leads to like kubrick and shit and what he did with the shining and stuff like these motherfuckers just tortured women back then it's also you'd have to some would argue that you know it was more okay for directors to force method acting you know there was like some forced method acting you know like or trick tricked into method acting yeah which is like not not the nicest thing to do but as an auteur it was a way to get what they wanted out of the actors yeah yeah <sighs> that's that's a, that's i mean there's yeah. a lot of gray areas and a lot of nuance of morals you know like i respect actors that really go through that shit though for sure i mean uh, e- even though they didn't willingly do it i respect it sure. <laughs> right. show. cheers to nuestra solid bang, bang. wow wow bright yeah vegetal bright vegetal i agree Def- definitely different not not as uh, subdued as that one. The first one mm. was, like I said, soft mm. and creamy. Like, not as, like, in your face. Like, this is in your face. As soon as you take the first sip, it's like, pow, mm. vegetables, agave, like, yeah, flavor. The flavor, you know? yeah. But the burn is a little bit more subdued, I would say. Mm. Not the flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't feel the heat on the aftertaste as yeah. much. Yeah, there's almost virtually no heat. Let's check out the percents. That's what we usually do. We haven't done here. We 46? got 46 on mm. this guy. 
So, you know, solid 92 in the place. And then this one was... Yeah, which uh, one was the first one? It's 45.67. So virtually the same, you know, yes, for all intents yeah. and purposes. Mm-hmm. The first one was the same alcohol content, but just different in the uh, flavor and the vibe. Yeah, so drastic. we want to shout out here on at this on the Nuestra Soledad Originaro de Oaxaca um in Station Mazaquilatan and the Mescalero is Jose Parada Valera and Santa Maria Zaquilatan. Mm. Shout out Mr. Valera in your bright vegetal flavors. I like it. No, it's very delicious. Drastically different. I haven't than tasted the first. this one in a while. The bottle uh, the bottle's been in the cabinet for quite a while like probably a good six seven months but i mm. haven't tasted it in a couple months easy how and it's a lot brighter than i remember how much does that usually go for again like 50 mm, yeah 45? something like that and any all the new extra sold ads typically are in the 45 to 55 range they mm-hmm. all like some of them are a little more expensive than others but they're all in that 10 ish window mm-hmm. that's very good yeah I very like good it. very good espadin oh wow oh man I wish I would have. Uh, if they're different. I, I wanna. I wanna say I like this one better because it's like more of a punch of flavor. But I don't. It's just. It's misleading because you. You want. Oh, that's. Yeah. But it's not better. It's just different. Yeah, the vegetal, like you know that it is like very. Uh, like I probably wouldn't. Like if I was gonna sip something for the evening, have multiples of one thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would be able to have more than two of these because it's such a strong mm-hmm. flavor. Whereas I could certainly have probably four or five of that, mm. you know, first one and and like be long term sipper. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. I could definitely have three or four of those. Yeah, I'm yeah, right. Yeah. I'm right. A little vegetal <laughs> flavor. It's like a good flavor. It's not like. Yeah. Um, it's not like. I don't know. I think my palate is completely like catered some, towards it now. Some like uh, green pepper, uh, earthy agave, you know, like rar. like earthy, oily, like like it's like the oils of like a green pepper or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very good. A little less, a little less um, mouthfeel though. Not a little thinner mm-hmm. than the first one. Which like comes off as smoother, in my opinion. I like I like it when it's thicker. I like when there's more mm. of a, like you were using oil in, in a flavor sense, but mm. in a thicker oily, mm. when you get more oil in the mouth feel, I like it better. You know whether you know it does. It's not about the flavor, but sometimes just the impression and texture that your tongue has. You know, different things are gonna appeal to different people. Yeah, yeah. But so. I also do feel like the that more oily texture will leave a more lingering flavor in your mouth, you know? Yeah, some stay on your tongue and some, like, take off the layer of the tongue. It's weird. It's it's strange how, like, uh, different alcohols work like that. It's important. It is. Yeah, I like Let me it. Get a little mango here, flipping it up. I don't, I've don't. i never actually done mango with the... I like it. ...salted gusano before. I like it better than the orange. Yeah? Yeah, it's fucking fire. It's hard to come by, like, a perfectly, like, right mango, though. Well, this is... I told you I was telling you about this before. Oh yeah, well. that I recently learned that there's many types of mango, mm-hmm. and visually we associate that rainbow peel as like the mango. Mm-hmm. But flavor wise, I feel like this is the mango. The um, these are the ye- yellow ones on the outside. They're called a champagne mango. Mm. These are the ones that taste the best. This is a sweet, nice mango. This is the mango that you're getting in like Asian restaurants. Yep. You're getting in a Thai sticky rice. Yep. Yep. This is that mango. But when you buy that rainbow shell mango in the store, it's yeah. a little more tart and bitter. Yeah. So champagne mangoes is where it's at, my man. Damn. The champagne <laughs> with mangoes. And with the salted gasano on there, it's like interesting. It's good. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It's different than the orange. I don't know if I like it better or worse, but certainly different. I like, I like it because it's like sweeter instead of like the citrus with the spice. Like mm. it's nice to have the sweet with the spice. Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with that shit fucks with it i fucks with it i like the way it looks with the orange pads <laughs> visually appealing i like things that are visually appealing you know, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. you know what i know we might be rushing but i might be down for the third one All right. i could be down for that we we press the get bu- into it press the button already <sighs> all right i'm sure the people want to hear what we got so we'll get into the magic cliche as I said, this is uh, 
this bottle is usually like one one ten something like that. Um, and mo most Madre cliches would be in that hundred plus range. It's a pretty rare agave. And uh, this one I got a great sale at about 50-ish. And we're looking at 47.53. I like how specific they are with the alcohol Five three. 47.53 alcohol content. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're looking at San Baltazar, Guela Vila. And the same, as I said earlier, Pedro Hernandez is the Mescalero. Koch, great brand. And we shall taste it. I want to hear that pop. This is the same dude, Pedro, same Pedro bowl. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up, yo, Pedro. You, you providing G. You providing us with some amazing flavors today. Appreciate you. Vote for Pedro, guys. <laughs> Mescalero. Totally of the year. vote for Pedro. You know what that is, then Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> it's a lot of cultural references I don't get, but that one I know. <laughs> what do you think about Napoleon Dynamite? It was all right. I yeah. wasn't like super hype on it like everybody was when it was popping but you thought it was like a fine movie it was okay yeah it was funny yeah, it yeah. Amused me you know like i liked it i just wasn't like goo goo gaga over it yeah, like a yeah. lot of people were yeah i think people were really hype on it but like it's a fucking i don't think it was overrated no i think it was like pretty good i'm, I'm, a, I'm a hear so like yeah. when people like, <laughs> when people sweat shit my first instinct is oh it can't be that is this good. shit really that <laughs> good <laughs> Like well, all, if, if the mainstream is sweating it, then it probably is kind of whack. That's like my gut reaction. And then I have to see it and be like, oh, all right, this one. Might be. I remember the first time I saw it being like vaguely adverse, like not mm -hmm. wanting to like think it was funny or like whatever. But then then certainly thinking it was funny and enter entertaining and I liked it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that. Yeah, I, I usually say that too. Like I'm a hater, but like the, the later or the older I get, the more I realize I'm not really a hater. Like, a hater, like, wants, wants the movie to suck, you know? Right, like, you know, right, like, right, right. It, I think, like... I don't uh, want it to suck. We're just, like, critics for no reason. <laughs> like, no one asks the motherfucker. Well, plus, I just don't think that the... the I don't agree with mainstream opinions yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So when something's big on a real widespread level, then mm. my gut reaction is to be like, oh, I probably don't like the thing that, like, 99% mm. of people like. But I don't, the, I don't think Napoleon Dynamite, the... Uh, I really don't know because I don't like know enough about the background and the filmmakers, but it doesn't seem like the type of movie they weren't going to be like Superman. It wasn't trying to be a nah. mainstream movie. It just popped off and the mainstream liked it, mm -hmm. you know, so which is different than being like some super mainstream kid movie like Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, Home Alone, don't. Yo, that's a classic. That's like embedded into uh, nostalgia. You know, that's that's complete nostalgia. I grew up with Macaulay Culkin, for real, for real. All right, this one is the, which one again? What's it Maja called? Majaquiche. Yeah. So this is, we've never had this ever. On the show, we haven't uh, drank any, um, I don't think anything. Maybe it was an ensemble that I'm not remembering, but I mm. don't even think it was an ensemble. I mean, we definitely have never had it so as its own. Mm. I'm going to name my kid there, Majaquiche. <laughs> okay. Wow. Has like a little twist in my mouth. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's different. Definitely different. The Definitely. Different. It has two. It has like three or four distinct layers that happen. Yeah, I noticed that too. And it gets almost like dry. Almost like you know how wine, like some dry wines, like on your tongue. It there's almost a moment where it has that dry wine tongue feel. Hmm. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like in the middle of your tongue, and it's like almost um, it coats it, but then like it's yeah, it's, it coats it in a weird way. And then hold up, I like it. Ah. You know what? It's very, it's very tame, but it has so many layers to it. So like usually when there's a ton of flavors in it, it's tough. You have to sort of like sort sort through them. Mm -hmm. And now I just I, it's all one experience. So nothing's really sticking out to me. It doesn't taste, you know, leafy. It doesn't taste like too like it doesn't taste like any of these other ones, obviously. But I mean, there's like a an herbal like it doesn't scream like vegetal as much as the new Estrella yeah. Soledad, but there's certainly like some yeah. herbal notes uh -huh. in there that aren't your usual like 
mm-hmm. you know, standard espadin, like, you know, smoke. Yeah, weed. not like herbal or not vegetal, not medicinal herbal, no, more no, no, like. No, no, not Yeah, it doesn't have that slight mint flavor that sometimes yeah. the Tabala does. It's like it a this, eucalyptus or some shit like that. Yeah, like what? Something, something, like, something that. like, I don't know. But it's it's definitely a, like, it's definitely not an espadin. You could tell that, yeah, like, yeah. from the taste. Pretty nuanced. I don't remember how many years it takes for this one to grow and it uh, must take a lot take a lot if it's expensive my eyes aren't good here no <laughs> you gotta put on your reading glasses <laughs> you got your, your contacts in Is which ones i feel like it says oh, wow. over 13 years but that's such a small print can you yeah. see it i'm like i i know it says 12 but i'm afraid that like it's hard it's hard it's getting harder for me to read that small yeah it's 12 all right so 12 years that's like right that's a solid that's a solid amount of years it's like yeah in the upper middle, as far as these things go. You said uh, Espadin's usually like 48 or something like that? No, 5 no, no, to no, 10? No. Uh, 7 to 8, you know, seven I think eight? So, okay. 6 to 8, you know, like 6 would be young probably, but occasionally I think some mm. stuff, you know, it's about the size, so some things, you know, if it gets, if there's more sun or rain that year, like it could be a little bit quicker mm-hmm. um, that the heart would come to be harvestable. But I think 6 to 8 is your average for your Espadin's. And Tabala's like what, like 12 to 15 too? Uh, so yeah, 12 to 15, I think the Tabalas and uh, Tepestate, the one we had last yeah. time, that's the 25. Like, there's that like, how you say it? You say it tepest- differently each time. I swear, <laughs> you first you said Tepeste, that's definitely wrong, and then you're that's like, definitely wrong. Tepeste, <laughs> and then you're like, Tepeste, <laughs> and now you're saying Tepestate. <laughs> like, what the, it's I'm just, just gonna, different. I'm just, like, gonna, I'm just gonna be confident every time I yeah. say it, <laughs> <laughs> just different syllables, different letters, different, Yo, like, whatever I said on the last show in the first half hour, that was the right way. The because, full word because I had I Google I think it was tra- Tepeste, I did, right? I did Google uh, Translator where I had it speak to me. You think they know <laughs> though? You think they know Tapeste? <laughs> yeah, tapeste. I no, and I might have looked it. I looked it up phonetically too. Like I had looked it up yeah, so yeah. that I whatever I said in the beginning of the last show was like as close as I'm gonna get to the right way. By the end of the show, I think I started flipping it again because I was drunk. Does it have an X in it? Sometimes it has an X, sometimes it has a Z, depending oh, on okay. uh, what uh, different regions like they they spell it differently depending. Because which is somewhat common that in the different regions of Mexico, there's some like slightly different uh, spellings on things. Yeah, I mean it's wa- like Oaxaca has an X in it, so I was thinking like Tapeje, <laughs> you know, like where it's just completely like I feel goes like over that it. doesn't sound right. <laughs> hey, I mean, because I have had it said to me in, um, you know, restaurants and bars yeah. before by people that definitely knew how to how to say okay. it. But we got it. We got to actually. That's like go. the oldest one. That that one's like, um, typically, you know, in that twenty to twenty five years, which is mm-hmm. old as fuck. Damn, we gotta fucking go out and actually do an episode somewhere. I really want to go to uh, La Cita. We should hit up uh, Bull Ramo and see if he's down to have us do an episode during the weekend. In the back patio would be cool. Yeah, dude. I used to love chilling out there a lot. I'll hit him up. We'll see. We put a movie on the iPad. That'd be <laughs> ridiculous. That'd be like, yo. Hey, well, he's keep, always keep watching. format alive. Well, he's always watching movies back there, though. Like, you know, there's two TVs, and he always has whatever he wants on there, and you could always change it. He always, he even said, like, yo, like, make me a playlist for, like, this 90s shit. Like, we're trying. I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying to listen to some new shit. Yeah, he has a 90s party called, uh, I think it, it might be Nevermind. But, like, you know, obviously. Uh, Nirvana. Yeah, yeah, Nirvana. Yeah, I just saw that they, they just reopened, like, mm-hmm. not the day that the LA reopened, but I think a couple of days afterwards yep, or something yep. like that. Yeah, it must have been, like, the weekend. I think, like, 19th or something like that. But, uh, yeah, they got, they've got they been getting a lot of write-ups. Like, thank God, man. That's a staple. Many nights there. Many uh incredible drinks incredible memories made there when i first moved out here so very oh, so incredible yeah very this important. is like the classic scene i feel yeah, like this a, is dude. like the, when i think of the birds this is the scene i think of yeah and this is definitely like something laid in like there's yeah. something laid in about those birds all the kids man like kids like running is this is so terrifying it's, it's actually pretty funny nowadays because it's all bright but like man they should redo this movie do you remember what is the what is the culmination like? What is the uh, what imprompted the birds to do this? Okay, was so it like it was something supernatural. 
I think so. I'm not totally sure. I'm just gonna put a spoiler warning because I don't know what I'm about to say. I mean, but like, I might like say from the '60s. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he put a spoiler warning on a movie made like 30 years before I was even born. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm spoiling this guy. Yo, but I mean, like seriously, if you haven't seen this, maybe even skip ahead because this is like a beautiful ass movie. You gotta watch this shit. Yeah, yeah. But like, um top it's weird like i don't know there's this weird element of like the so she's super smitten over the dude that's like the beginning of the movie yeah 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 and then he's really into his mom or something like that and then the mom's not really fucking with her and then like there's a thing where like she's bringing it over like she has an obsession with these birds or they start talking about it in the beginning like she starts talking about love birds and then she's she brings him uh a love bird over from across she takes it onto a boat and goes to the island where he lives. Hmm. She finds where he lives, and she's beautiful, so it's not creepy. <laughs> so, and then, um, yeah, right before she gets to the island, a bird attacks her. And then, uh, like, I think, I don't know if the thing is that she's bringing them over or what, but, like, I forget how this goes, but it gets really intense. It gets to the point where, like, it, it definitely is to the point where they're following her. And yeah. then uh, they start like they gouge like the motherfucker's eyes out in that one scene, and then yeah, it's it's weird. I think people start suspecting like what is good. Like you got to leave, <laughs> get out. And I don't know if it's like maybe like her bringing like her city slicker shit over to this small town, or I don't know what it is. But, but according to your logic, yeah. If you're attractive, it's okay to be creepy. Yeah, that's, I mean, not my logic, just complete, like, I mean, social norms yeah, in yeah, general. Yeah, totally, yeah. Imagine... People that are attractive get away, get away with more than other people. Of course, Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, like, dude, like, when... when you I ever mean, s- I get away with so much. Oh, life. my God. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there, there's... I forget, me and my friend were talking about this the other day. Like, you could, like... Th- there's women that are visiting men in prison, right? Yes. And, like, there are relationships Common. having, yeah, in prison, like, whatever it's called. Like, you could have... Conjugal like, visits. Conjugal weekend visit or some shit like that. But there's no men visiting women in prison. You don't think? I'm sure there is. You think? It's gotta As, be. How much more compared to women? I mean, I have no idea. Yeah, I would say the media and like movies, like the, I mean, well, by pure percent, men cause more crime. Men, oh yeah, commit more true, crime, yeah. and thusly more men are in jail. Mm-hmm. So by proxy of that of numbers, pure numbers, there's more men in jail, more men in prison. So there's more women are visiting men in prison, mm-hmm. inevitably, and women are societally portrayed as being more loyal. Yeah. So if your man goes to prison, you know, again, societally, uh, who knows if this is really true anymore, but the perception is. So I think that's where you're 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 getting it, you know. Well, I'm saying, but I'm, there's certainly dudes that have to be like, you know, pawning over some like I chick don't. that's like in jail. I mean, I'm saying it's fucked up that that happens, but it's like, all right, if you're if you're an attractive man, you could have you could have a murder record, and then women will like, you know, like. Look, glance over it. Or have you ever seen like? Remember, there was like this very like attractive dude that released the what do you call it? The headshot that he had, and everyone was like, "Damn!" Like I'd still fuck him, even though like <laughs> he was like a fucking like arsonist or some shit like that, you know? Well, like every mass murderer in history, that, yeah. that's actually been caught and gone to prison gets love letters yeah. from like deranged chicks. Yeah, but do you think that? Guys are writing dir- like love letters to any like mass mur- like women that are like serious. I do, I do. No way, bro. Not a chance. Not just, a I ch- just think the numbers. Can you even might imagine not be as high. one case? Like, imagine that. Like, like, imagine that. Like a man. Like, wow, she's hot. Like, I want to. Like, you know, she, even though she murdered someone. Like, you know, like you would. You would. No, not me <laughs> or not any man. I don't think. You know. If it's, you met some chick out at a bar and, okay. and you thought she was like one of the like penultimate hottest chicks you ever met that okay. was like chatting with you and flirting with you and you're mm-hmm. like, this is going good. This right. chick's super hot. This is the type of chick yeah. I want to rap with. Okay. You know? Yeah. You like the same shit. Like yeah. whatever. I'm already fall in love already. All right. Yep. Yep. 
And uh, then she's like, oh, you know, I need to let you know that I just got out of prison. And you're like, oh, all okay, right. You're yeah. like, all right, hopefully this is yeah. You're thinking like, ah, oh, but I hope. And she's like, you know, I did like, you know, do a stint for like involuntary manslaughter. Whoa, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Would you, would you be like, all right, I'll still go home and fuck this chick no. tonight and then not talk to her again? Or would you just be like, be like, nix it right there because I, I might die? Well, I mean, I wouldn't just nick it in the butt right there. I would be like... You'd feel it out to see... see. No, I wouldn't feel it out. I would probably, like, you know... Make you don't want to m- piss her off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be afraid that uh, she already, like, got enough of my info. Maybe we exchanged Instagrams or some shit already. She's like, I know like, where this motherfucker damn, why is. why did she wait this long to yeah. tell me this? Dude. I would have busted out earlier. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a tough one, I guess. Uh, but, no, I, I would find a way to, like dissociate but it really depends and you on, so you i mean again i'm talking about like this is the pen ultimate like the like this it like, really this is the girl that like no that's fucked uh, up what i just said all right let's so let me like, backpedal for a second <laughs> let me just backpedal let's let me moonwalk I mean, back to I my would, point I, I, <laughs> I mean the involuntary involuntary man like it depends on what kill what someone. happened like, it wasn't murder it was self-defense in, like was the dude trying to like you know was the dude attacking her was the dude like hurting her in any type of way where she had to like defend herself and she accidentally killed him or maybe she killed him in defense. Maybe he was, like, doing something fucked up. Exactly. But she yeah. still went too far. She yeah. didn't have to, like, kill the dude. She but, had already subdued him, and then she just was in a rage and, like, full throttle, like, took the dude out. Hey, man, if you uh, if you do the time that you're given, you Baby should be forgiven. Cry. You should be forgiven, yeah, When you, as soon as you leave. So you're saying you would forgive her. Depends. And you will go home with it. Not a serial killer, though. If it's if she no, gets a serial killer is a whole different story. If she got two bodies on her, then no. If she got two, <laughs> like one, one death, two manslaughter, one like, death what? with adequate context is a maybe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I like see, I see. I, like forget what I said before. <laughs> I think I I think I would have to not because she's gorgeous, but like just because shit happens, yo. Like but there's what movies if she was about just that shit. Okay, looking. Like cute enough, that, cute enough that you were flirting with her, you know, like in the in the realm that you're interested. But she was just on the bottom scale of cute to, for I, you. That and then talking, she said the same thing. She's like, "Yeah, FYI, there's I uh, just got a prison for <laughs> involuntary manslaughter." Let's just say that talking stage would be a very long talking stage <laughs> where I would have to absolutely really feel, feel it that out because I don't want to be one of the men that she slaughters. Like, you know, I want to make sure that you know it was a real accident and it wasn't. I, I don't know. Now, the older I get, the less I want to get into those crazy situations. Like, I don't want to, like, I'm just afraid. I am scared. But, like, men in general are known for, like, dealing with crazy chicks if they're hot. It's like a stereotype yeah, exactly. that, like, a dude will but put I, up with a crazy bu- chick Same with hot. a woman, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. I mean yeah, that's, that's what we're talking, talking about. about yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think that it dudes more so. I think so, uh, perception wise, that's what society perceives. Whether the reality is that is hard to I say. I think so because, like, men a lot of times, like, they I like. Mean, you can't deny well, that you've probably done it before. I mean, I have. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely mean, I'm sure put I have. up with, like, Fuck. I mean, I'm, I have <laughs> a damn. low tolerance for, like, whack jobs. But I've never put up with no like murderers or nothing right, like crazy, break. crazy. All right, but I've definitely put up with a moderate amount of craziness, uh, <laughs> you know, more s- for an attractive girl that I wouldn't absolutely have put, that I wouldn't have put up with in, in if the girl wasn't at a certain level. Yeah, I mean, all right, never mind. I was gonna say something. <laughs> um, I, let's break it down for a second. I think this is it's because in society, I, this is not what I believe in, but like this is what society believes in is that. Men are judged according to their success. And a lot of women are like, you know, are judged according to their beauty and looks. Like sure. And I'm not saying that like that's the penultimate, but like like um like you I mean with men I would say two things. Like there's certain men success, certain men machismo, like strength. Like, you know, like Yes. Yeah, yeah. Depending on like you but know. well, even universal though, universally, you know, like men judge other men according to their success. Women judge other women according to their beauty a lot of times, and like they also like they appreciate a woman that's successful, but they don't put down women that aren't successful, and they raise up women that are beautiful. 
You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when that happens, I think that like men, like if they see a hot girl, they're not expected to be successful. You know, like when it comes to like you know business savvy or just intelligence in general, and um, I think that's why they let it go. But if a man is um, beautiful and she, uh, I guess like he has to be beautiful and successful in a weird way. And I'm not saying like, oh, that's a plight of men. I'm just saying that's probably why more men uh, put up with crazy women than more women put up with crazy men. But I think there are plenty of crazy men, obviously. That, uh, I mean, there's plenty of crazy everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking nuts out there. Yo. Shout out to uh, nine months of therapy. That's why I got this, <laughs> these flowers to, for myself. Shout out to crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I, you, without that, that's literally like a, a commemorative. Or yeah, like, yeah. Lack of a better way to put it. I don't know why. Every three months, I've been doing it. I just buy myself some flowers and shit, just so you know. I don't know. I try to find a way to do it. What am, what am I gonna do? Get little little tokens to yourself. It's yeah, always when, nice. When you is know? it? A, when is it okay for men to get flowers? Like it's all about like you know, just get yourself some shit. Yeah, I mean, it's not just. I mean, you're choosing flowers, but just yeah, give, yeah. give yourself a token to give yourself yeah. a small gift, a small thing to brighten up your life and to mm-hmm. commemorate some benchmark. You know. Yeah, that's a mad important. I'd. I think I'd rather. Uh, I'd rather do that than just like eat food by myself or some shit like that. It's just like something like it just brightens my day and just like reminds me for that whole week. Different, you know, yeah. something, something. So mm-hmm. I like to. Uh, I like to do the bottles. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that's beautiful too. But damn, that's I gotta, like I got. I picked up a bottle last week that's that I'm not letting myself open till I uh, finish a project at work. Damn, so it's that's like a, a benchmark of like a, a mm. seven a seven month long work project that was been a pain in my ass and long. And so I'm like, seven all right, months? holy shit. So I'm like, all right, when long. this shit is fucking over, I'm cracking this bottle. <laughs> and so that it's like you know, it's something I w- maybe would have bought at some point anyway and you know drink anyway but i'm like oh i have all these things I'm, i'll make it like special to open it after i finish that project you know to give myself a little token you know damn dude i respect the discipline man that shit is amazing yeah i mean you gotta like you gotta like congratulate yourself because you know we come from like the east coast and shit like it's, I, not, I, it's not your first it's not your first instinct it's not, for me it's no, certainly it's not, not my, my first, first instinct so no. it's a, it's it's a level of maturity for lack of a better way yeah. to put it it's it's something to even start thinking that way start mm-hmm. and then a second step to actually follow through and like do it mm-hmm. you know yeah that is how the brain works you have to like get into that mindset it's and yeah, we just don't, you know, the reason why... It's also, I think, again, we'll stick it with the male-female thing for a second. Like, yeah, yeah. with men, it's even, I think, less so. We don't think about small rewards like that. You know, like like token rewards, like a flower or so. You know, think about guys, think about, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, midlife crisis. A dude buys a new car. Or yeah. Like, save up money and get some this or that, you know. But it's, like, it's not always about, like, the bigger things. And, like, sometimes, like, the little tokens that keep you going is, like, important. And mm-hmm. I don't think that a lot of men think like that you know as their first instinct it's in there mm-hmm. you know but as the top of your brain is your first instinct mm-hmm. to keep those little tokens to keep yourself happy and like whatnot yeah and it's not like to keep it going like it's not like to the point where it's like fuck like i need this in order for me to keep on going it's like no like no, you should yeah, be yeah. proud of yourself you know and or like you know you're doing something good and you acknowledging it as opposed to like just like oh yeah you like Anytime men like deal with some hardship, it's just like, oh yeah, this is what life is, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it is, you know, life yeah, is full is of hardship, shit, yeah. but we live 365 days a year for many years, and it's like you can't be. Everything's not a benchmark. No. So it's, it's finding that balance of like you, you mm-hmm. can't be rewarding yourself all the time, and then it's just meaningless and superfluous. Yeah, then <laughs> so you're, it's, it's not a reward. Finding that middle ground of like not never doing it but not overdoing it and not having to always have to be some big thing that you overthink mm, it's a little yeah. thing you spent like a small amount of money on the flower yeah. and it doesn't have to be that like deep but it brightens up your room and brightens yeah. up your day and it gives you gives you something aesthetically yeah and it's not something i thought of like regular i was just like oh shit like it's been a while like i've really been doing this shit for a minute like and then i was like you know i like like i fucking like talking to that flower dude like out there he's on third street is it a, a stand? No, it's like an actual like a uh, little brick and mortar like hole in the wall joint. Mm. And uh, yeah, he's pretty legit there, you know. 
Oh, this is the part in the movie where like, oh shit, she smacked the shit out of her. <laughs> they started. This is where they blame her for like bringing the birds onto the town. She smacks the shit out of her though. Oh man, I like how it's like they they. <laughs> It's clearly like a film set because if you looked in the background of that bar, yeah, like they had like the shelves stock like it was a bar, right? Mm. But it was like four different bottles and like twenty of the same bottle. Like no bar oh, has really? that many of this. It would be a bunch of different bottles on the bar. It was like five of the same bottle, five of a different bottle, five of the different. You know, it was oh, like really? too, it was like too much. You know, like yeah. the repetition. I have seen a bar that only had four bottles and they just. Like, remember that weird Korean? Yo, I knew you were going to say that. It's really? Weird. That's so weird. You're talking about the, I, that the one. That hole in the wall joint that we went to? Yeah, that one random time we, we were sat like, at the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's totally. what I remember. But they yeah. barely had any selection, but they did have multiples of the things yeah. that they did have. But we thought we, we just decided to go in because we were like, this looks like a fucking like, mob, mob joint. joint. <laughs> yeah, like a place where like mobsters like you know like go to funnel their money and like have meetings and shit yeah, which is like for sure like uh, felt like uh, 20 percent of koreatown yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's amazing this place is sick there's so <laughs> many fucking restaurants so many bars it's insane how like you know, now that like things are opening up probably it'll take a little more time but at some point we need to like try to get in with some koreans and get them to take us to one of the late night spots that you can't get into unless you like mm. know Koreans that know somebody. Like I don't know. Because there's never, like the late night gambling oh, spots. Yeah. Like Korea's known for the the oh, after shit. hours bar gambling spots. They're not legal. They don't have after hour yeah. licenses, but they're after hours clubs that you can go mm. in and drink and gamble. I mean, I'm not even into gambling, but like yeah, yeah. just the atmosphere Catch the vibe of for it a being second. like this basically an illegal <laughs> casino that like four in the morning in Koreatown that with all all like people probably not speaking English. Yeah, I mean these all these plans are all alleged. <laughs> but uh <laughs> expect them to come true. <laughs> no, but like I mean like I'm sure we could. Like uh oh yeah, by the way, this Friday is that uh Korean comedy show thing. Oh fuck, really? Yeah, yeah. Damn, go this Friday I have tickets to go. There's a mm. um Andy Warhol photography show. Oh word. That's that cool. uh it's it's got a couple hundred i think a couple hundred Andy Warhol photo photographs mm -hmm. and some percentage like a fifth of the stuff in the show or something like that 20 something photos have never been seen before or other than private collectors before mm. so so it's it's been on display before and some stuff that hasn't it's a place called the, uh, the new house new house mm. and, uh, in hollywood okay. okay so uh and it was like a close by to here yeah, it's I mean, like it's in the, the hub of Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. in the, the thick of Hollywood. So, yeah, not that far from here. Like, what, 15, 20 minutes from here? Yeah, that's why I And the, it's the new new house has, like, it's a community art space. Like, it has a bunch of different. There's, like, pop-up bars and restaurants in there. Like, mm -hmm. there's gallery people that have, like, studio space. It's just their private studio space. Yeah. Then there's, like, public gallery space. There's different. It's a big building that I've never been there. It's going to be my first time going. But it, my understanding is that it's, like, this, you know, community space where different people rent different different sections and there's this uh restaurant in there called broken spanish that oh word um super famous la place that had shut down the beginning of the pandemic and people were mad upset because it's like a la institution so they've opened up for a limited like four month or something pop-up engagement at that new new house place and i've been wanting to go there and then i saw the warhol thing come up and i was like oh and i was and it was hard to get tickets for well to get a reservation for the restaurant and get a ticket for the world thing that lined up on the same night that i could go back to back to the two oh, things I see. so this friday was like the day that i could get uh, mm -hmm. you know both i could get a ticket to the show and a reservation to the restaurant damn that's fire dude warhol's sick but next month i definitely want to do that asian comedy show yeah like i don't know if i'm gonna go this month my homie has a birthday party so we'll see but that was gonna be my plan originally i might still go and then uh pull up to my homie's party right after or something i like uh having the laughs where where is that comedy show um it's like off like seventh or it's like no i'm sorry off like olympic like um it's my downtown maybe, no it's in between here and downtown so it's maybe about like a mile and a half away from here Oh, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. F like, towards downtown, maybe, like, two miles from here. Is it still Koreatown? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. It's, cool, like, cool. at that... It's, like, the very opposite end of, like, the Koreatown. The heart of Koreatown. We're in, yeah. the, we're in the end of Koreatown. Yeah, but it's actually on the other end of Koreatown, bordering, oh, okay. uh, what, what do you call it, downtown? 
more mid Wilshire type downtown. Well, it's like uh, towards downtown, so it's like Olympic and I forget Olympic and like something Olympic and like fucking I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh. You want to do a let's quick do a little, little recap? comparison? I'm good. Let's, let's do Pedro. Let's pay, I'm use the know, bathroom real quick. Since. You know, we got the same brand and the same Escalero Pedro here. Do a little comparison of his two expressions so we could see what something from the same town, the same soil and terrar, and the same man's choices taste like in comparison. How he works two different agaves. The Espadin versus the Madra Cruce. Yes, yes. Alex is going to the bathroom. I'm pouring it up right now. Bang, bang. Check it out. Compare these. And it'll be nice for a palette. Oh, yeah. So we got this one is the Magic Cliche. This okay, one gotcha. is the Espadin. Do a lightning round real quick. Yeah. So like I said, the, you know, because the, the first two, it's like a Espadin versus Espadin, but like mm -hmm. two different guys, two different soils, two different towns. And this is like the same guy, the same soil, the same town, but two different plants. Mm -hmm. And the way, you know, he... They're basically they're both done in copper. They're both they're both uh, distilled in done, copper. Yeah, they're both distilled in copper pot stills. And hmm. they're both done in the same underground ovens and like so the process with these is pr pretty much identical. Yeah. That they're just two different plants. Uh huh. Two different agaves. Yes. Damn. All right. Which one are you going for? I'm gonna do aspirin first. Same. Same. Man, that's very smooth. I like it. Again, like the, the first thing that when it first hits my tongue, the first thing is that soft, like just this soft, creamy mouth feel. And then mm. a little heat hits you. Uh huh. But it's, it's, it's nice. Again, I could sip that all night if I wanted. I could throw that in a margarita, you know, Paloma. I feel like my second try, it's a little bit harsher on the second round for some reason. But um, still like a standard, like this would be a good one to start with. Yeah, yeah. And it certainly could be a beginner. Yeah. You know, even even at the full price, even if it wasn't on sale, if mm -hmm. it was 40 something, it's not like killing people on the bank, you know. Yeah. But on the 30, it's fucking, it's a steal at 30, yeah. to be honest. You know. I agree, yeah. All right, so let's try this. Uh, Maga Quiche? Maga Quiche? Yeah. And there is another, wow. mezcal, there's another agave plant called the Quiche. And this is the uh, Madra Quiche. So this is the mother. Oh, you know, I see. The, you know, so I'm a, I don't know. But I'm assuming this is an older plant than the cliche. Or there's got to be some reason why this is the mother cliche and the other one's just the cliche. Yeah, I wonder if it's like bigger or something. Maybe they age it a little bit longer. But I mean, this is certainly much more complex and nuanced compared to the Espadin. Yeah, it has like a Tabala flavor a little bit too. I could taste that. The herbal notes probably yeah. remind you somewhat. I like the aftertaste is very it's a, good. it's a little bit it's 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 less in your face than tabala some of the tabalas mm -hmm. can be like really like yeah here's the flavor you either like it or you don't yeah you know this is a little bit more subdued than yeah. some of the tabalas yeah. the so complex flavors are still there though they're just definitely. not being shoved down your throat yeah mm. i mean i like it yeah it's very good and um if you said that one you got it on sale for 50 that's that's a, a steal. Crazy, I would, crazy I easily, steal. I would easily spend an extra twenty for that bottle. Dude, it usually yeah. costs like one ten. It'd be another like, seventy dollars, like, like actually. That's crazy. I mean, is it, do you think it's because um? I don't. Uh, this has nothing to do with the flavors of mezcal, but do you think it's because like people just don't know? What do you mean? Like it's just been sitting on the shelves for so long, and they're just like, ah, let's get. I don't rid think of this so. Shit. I don't think so. Because Koch is a pretty well-known brand. Koch was, um around before like Kaj was like mm. early in the game a little bit before like mezcal was as trendy as it is right now mm -hmm. so they're not like a new brand that's just like popping off like they've been 
but out. The, but the popularity and price model for mezcal in that specific store, like $110, might be too steep where it's just sitting on the shelves. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. KL has a pretty big stock, and they yeah. in in the one to two hundred range, they probably have. 30 bottle different mezcals like there ain't there ain't wow. no shortage of, of bottles in that range um, well we got it, it was clearly like they had Koch stuff on sale because there and there was a third expression oh. they had three different bottles of Koch on sale so it was clearly and it was it wasn't straight up a sale it was like if you like surprise their mailing list and you're in the K&L insiders list oh, so I, I get see. the K&L's mailing list yeah yeah so it was like if you were a mailing list subscriber you got an email that had like the deals for the month it wasn't like the you walk into the store and it said sale. Yeah. It wasn't like that. I'm just for the ease of discussion, I was calling it a sale. Mm -hmm. But it was more like a discount for the mailing list people. And, you know, if you got that list type of thing. Yeah, I'm signed up to it when I bought the, uh, what do you call it? The Verde joint? Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. But yeah, I mean, it's, and that was of the three bottles. I mean, that was, this was, you know, $15 cheaper. This is like, sixty dollars cheaper like yeah. that's like a that's a steal when it's like you know uh, that makes it like triable you know when something's like a hundred and ten bucks it's like am i gonna try this you know like uh, you're only really pressure you really want you really, like you only want to if you're gonna spend if you're gonna spend that much money you want to know yeah as much as you can that's true you yeah. know you want to know theoretically that you're gonna like it but so I don't know if I would just randomly try that at 110 if I hadn't had it at a bar or something to know. But at 50, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to just try this. You know, like, you know, sure. But I've never heard of a bottle that was 50% off. You know, it makes no sense. It, so. it does. It, it is crazy. That's what I'm wondering, you know. And it really makes you think, though, when it comes to, like, the price model. And I the mean, there's got to be some reason. There's got to be some That's ulterior thinking, business like, reason. Like, I think like just people like maybe just aren't really like fucking like giving it a shot, you know? Like it could be that where it's like, yo, like if you just like. Or, I mean, I don't, I don't, it's hard to speculate, but it could also be because there is some other trendier brands that are in the hundred plus territory that, that people are more regularly throwing money. Yeah. The hundred plus at yeah. X brand and Y brand because of whatever reason, but maybe only maybe only mezcal heads know about this but some mm -hmm. like you know just somebody that read some blog about some other hundred plus band or, or spending money on that one more mm -hmm. i don't know there's got to be some reason well i mean even if i didn't know about the price point like i i i, I gotta say like this might be one of my favorite mezcals oh, it's nice. fucking delicious it's really good it has like very um complex unique flavors in it but it's not like we said it's not sh being shoved down your throat it's like to be enjoyed and to be experienced it's not it's not like whoa what was that it's like what is that that's like yeah, a, you yeah. know you're not like whoa what is yeah. that it's like is that yeah i mean even as much as i love tabalas like some of them are so in your face yeah that yeah. i would never have more than one mm -hmm. you know i have that mm -hmm. one glass for the night and be like uh -huh. oh this is interesting and complex and i like it but i'm not gonna have a second because it's mm -hmm. so unique and and weird and mm -hmm. in your face but this is kind of nuanced and subdued enough that it's 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 sippable in a longer term yeah it's sort of like someone that like you're talking to or like you want to keep on talking to them because you're like what are they they're they're holding something back you know they got something they're not saying everything you know you want to keep on talking you seem interesting you know? but you're yeah. not presenting yeah. yourself as fully interesting yeah yeah what's, just, what's, in what's going what's on in there, in there you know? have you somehow committed an involuntary yeah. manslaughter yeah. at some point in your life <laughs> yeah yeah oh man i mean that was a, that was a good little discussion though that made me think like for a second like who who would have known? Who would have thunk we would have gotten so deep in this podcast? Who would have thunk it? Oh, I mean, all right, fuck it. <laughs> Might as well have a second taste of this yeah, bad boy right here. The new Esther Soledad is, uh, and then we can, uh, then yeah. we can f and decide on what our favorites are we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, after we. I feel like that's a good way to go about it, right? Two yeah. tastes of everything in a. Mm -hmm. in a I'm glad we did these back to back, like the same brand ones, because they're they're just. But it's not just the same brand, but the same guy in the same process. soil in the same town. Mm -hmm. So it's this is it's interesting to see, you know, he's mm -hmm. making the same still, the same distillery, you know, he's it's. They it's, gotta put their Instagram on that shit, bro. They gotta need to put like their fucking like. Well, they got the website. No, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about Pedro. I'm, I'm talking about the, the dude, Pedro. you know, like, yeah. his, him holding some agave. Yo, like, real <laughs> talk, man. Like he he makes. A damn good mezcal 
Pedro, what is good? Yeah. I don't know if like he's just following directions <laughs> or nah, he's in he's the, the fam. Ma- he's the, he's the fucking man. maestro mescalero. He's making the choices maestro. passed down from his grandfather to his father. I don't really know this, but I'm assuming yeah, yeah. That, you know, a lot of it is family heritage. A lot of it's passed down from generation to generation. I don't know about his particular family, but mm-hmm. it's, that's just a very common dynamic mm-hmm. in the mescal world. Yeah, shout out to all the Mescaleros in the world. You guys are doing an amazing service. Salute my friend. Cheers. Cheers, my friends out there. Thanks for joining us as always. Yell at me because I put my mic down too frequently. No. It's because I just want to connect with you and not connect with the mic. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. It's just hella tasty, too. It's a classic flavor. It's a classic, like, it's just so balanced. It's very balanced. Not too much smoke, not too much punch, like decent amount of like flavor in it when it comes to like, it has like a signature flavor, like a sweet, like vegetal, not too vegetal, but it's not too anything. It's just like, it is what it is. No extra salt at that. Very delicious. I like it. It's different than some other things in a um, similar class. Mm. I think it has... I mean, it's funny, I've had some, uh, you know, some some people might, and when I say people, I'm talking about mezcal nerds, <laughs> um, some mezcal nerds w- maybe will talk shit on Espinin because it's the most common, and mm-hmm. they want to get into, like, this nerdy, like, thing that's 25 years old and this and that on the side of a mountain, and they can yeah. get two liters of whatever, and it costs a thousand dollars, you know, like, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. but... Also, like, by the nature of Espadin being the most prevalent... yeah. It's also and it's also coming from a number of different regions and a number of different states that there, I've had some crazy different espadins. Yeah. And even just these two back to back, I'm not gonna say they're crazy different, but they're significantly different. Pretty and I've had different. some others that were like crazy different. Yeah. And um, you can't say that just because there is some cheaper espadins and espadins that are geared towards cocktails and that they're not as complex the espen in and of itself is not complex because this is kind of complex and i've had some others that were like crazy nuanced and well it's like uh, it's like um if it's the basics it's the basics it's like if you don't get the basics you don't get the product itself it's like down south like down south it's all about simplicity like when it comes to rap music and shit like that like, people used to talk shit on rap music because it wasn't as complex. But if you don't get the simplicity, then you don't understand the culture in general. Right? And complex is um, opinion. You know, like, what what makes something complex? I mean, like, we well, use right, these let's, words. Let's keep on but... going with this rap thing real quick. Like, say, like, like a, a complex verse and a double entendres and this and that. But, like, what really resonates with people is just a good flavor. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't Laffy have... Taffy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> bam, bam, bam. is that is that that? Laffy Taffy, that Taffy, that Laffy Taffy. I mean, I love that song, I mean, but it's, it's simple as song. fuck. But you like, know, like it, it ended up like changing the entire genre in the same way that Espinins are gonna take over liquor and you know in general. It's I mean, like I, I, to people, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I think. I mean, certainly in my power and a lot of other people, Espinin has mm-hmm. taken over tequila. You, you know, it's the... I can't even drink tequila unless it's Casamigos at this point. Stop, stop, stop. I, I mean, you don't get the basics. <laughs> no, but for real, I fuck with Casamigos. No, heavy. no. I mean, I don't no. love it, but I like all mezcal over Casamigos. But I don't mm-hmm. like tequila in general. Ban Casamigos from ever being <laughs> mentioned on nah, the show. We, I'm about to bring out a bottle. Where's the bull Mike at, yo? Nope. No, nope. Mike the pull up. He no. gonna no. have some words to no. say. Should, this was that. This is the scene you were talking if you about. Like where... glycerin and vanilla extract. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Damn. Yes, I guess Casamigos. Let's is keep good. on going. Like, all right, you've already convinced me. Fuck Casamigos. I'm on your side now. What's yo? Fuck Casamigos. You know what bro. we might need to do for a bonus episode? What is have you taste good tequila? I've never. I mean, I probably some haven't. Fortaleza. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I haven't had a bottle in a minute. Fortaleza is my number one, and it's well-respected. I mean, everyone, mm-hmm. anybody that knows anything about tequila is not going to talk shit about Fortaleza. But um, it's it's my favorite. 
hands down. What's the price looking like? On a on a Blanco? I don't know, 40, 50 bucks. Okay. Maybe I'll cop that one. On next um time. Yeah, on a Neo, a hundred. You know, like okay. the, you know, it's it's you know a little different world than this. It's all the same agave, but it's about the aging. Yeah, but the Blanco, yeah. I mean, the Blanco would be a better con- comparison to mezcal. But I mean, it's just different. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's all old school made. Fortaleza is all like it's it's a t- Tona. It's like a fucking donkey pulling a wheel, crushing agave. It's mm-hmm. like old school artisanal process there's no industrial processes going on most tequila even like good tequila is is somewhat industrial made so the 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 smaller percentage of brands that in the tequila world that are using artisanal processes and old school processes um again it's similar also like that hat i wore last time make tequila mezcal again yeah because there's plenty of tequila that's essentially is the same as mezcal you yeah know, it's not they're not using uh extractors and they're not using industrial shredders they're they're chopping the shit with a machete mm-hmm. they're having a horse crush the shit with a tahona mm-hmm. like those processes are slower and they have a smaller yield yeah so like in uh, corporations don't want small yields right they don't want slow processes no. right they, they want fast they want to be able to yields. pump out supply and demand so, like that but the sacrifice there is flavor. It's flavor, and, and, quality, yes. and like, yeah, just like all so around. I don't, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I really don't believe that you've had a lot of the better quality tequila. Mm-hmm. And by quality, I, definitely I don't haven't. just mean price. I, I mean, I mean that artisanal, I can like name old school all process. the tequilas I've ever had. It's, I could name it from the top to bottom. Top is Casamigos. Fucking, I've had the different Jose Cuervos. And I've had fucking uh, Montezuma, the worst tequila Oof. ever. Worst tequila ever. Oof. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, and you I... certainly had the revenge. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what, yeah, yeah, the revenge of Montezuma. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the flavor of tequila in the slightest. In the slightest. Like, mezcal is completely different than that. And, yeah, like, I, I don't mean, like there's it some the tequilas that, like, I could probably put in a, a a nondescript bottle and tell you it was mezcal. We'd and, have to see. I mean, and like, it wouldn't necessarily. Most tequila is not smoky, but there's there's. Vent- I'm at the th- point though. We've tried like fucking twenty five different bottles at least of mezcal. Like I, would, I feel like I would know. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. I mean, we're, if we're looking at but if I would three, like it, you're three saying, bottles yeah, yeah. over, yeah, easily twenty five plus. Yeah. yeah, but like. Like, I just don't like the innate flavor of tequila. It's just too funky, too... Like, it just doesn't feel like it should be ingested. Like, it doesn't... Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because of my Asian stomach or something. I, I, I really Asian feel that way. Stomach. Yo, I really feel that way, you know? Like, yeah. I You know, for a while, I was like, yo, I'm only drinking Asian drinks. I'm only dating Asian women. Like, it's just like, you know, I just drank too much tequila. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but then again, you haven't even had Baiju. Oh, yeah. I, th- I had a taste of it like over the weekend, but not a whole thing. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, I went it's to... It's uh, funky, right? Yeah, well, that's medicinal. That's like has a medicinal sort of flavor to it. Not like tequila is just different. Like, I, I mean, I like funky shit, but like tequila is just like, what the fuck is this flavor? Like, it's just like, yo, like who... I mean, we all signed up for this shit? Shitty tequila and... There's shitty tequila, there's yeah, yeah. good tequila, yeah. and there's artisanal tequila. Like there's yeah. such there's such a wide range. I'm okay with good tequila. If it's like good, like that's good. But like if it's artisanal, that's probably what I'd probably rather have, I think. Like I, I like I just need to taste it. So you know, like maybe uh we'll have to continue this conversation when we got another <laughs> you know another we could do a blind tasting or something <laughs> like that or I'll have to trick you. You know, I'm not like the type of guy that like, you know, I don't make my decision until until I taste it. Like I like it for real. All these all the mezcals we've had are fucking good except for that one weirdly weird one. I forget I forget which one it was. That was pretty good though, still. I think I know which one you didn't. There was a couple that you were like pretty iffy on, but it was mostly like you were. Well, I don't even know if it was mezcal. Like actually, now that I think about it. I mean, there was a uh, tabala that you really weren't feeling. Okay. Either way, 
I'm what are you done. feeling here? What's your fave? What's your fave? Top Out of to all bottom, this, yeah, it has, to, it has to be uh, actually in the order from left to right or right to left if you guys are watching. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, it's just fucking. For sure. The, I see that. What is it? Majaquiche? Yeah. The Majaquiche just has. Well, all right. These first two actually have very, very. Um, like, it's a whole experience in one. You're not, like, picking out the flavors. It's not like, it's not like, oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? You're just enjoying it. And that's what I really like about both these. No Oyster Soledad and the uh, Majaquiche by, uh, I, forget, I forget what that's called. But Koch. Koch. Koch L, technically. It's, it, that one, though, the Majaquiche has a lot of flavors. And if you choose to, you could really think about it and choose to delve in it. But if you didn't want to, you could just t- taste it and then just enjoy it without having to think about it. Sure. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, the Koch Espadin is certainly my least favorite. Yeah, and that's yeah. not to say I don't like it, because no. I do. You know, like, but just when we're comparing the three here. It reminds that me one's of Verde a, little, a little bit too the much. subtle. Though. Yeah, because it's 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 more subtle and muted. It doesn't it doesn't yeah. scream a lot of flavors to you. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas these, the Nuestra Soledad Espadin and the the Majacusha Kitchell is has a lot more nuance and, and complexity mm-hmm. and and distinctness. These these have mm-hmm. much more distinct flavors that you can grab onto. Yeah, if you choose to. That's what I'm yeah. learning the, the, now. The Majacusha, like I almost would like to eat it with like a cheese plate. Yeah, no, I could definitely you, taste you that. Know, yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. The, the, it has like an olive feel the to light, it, you know, the, like the, the the light herbalness and the the light. There's a hair of smoke. Like, I mean, mm. none of these are pal smoky. Like, no, for none of them. People that have yeah. this misconception that like all mezcal, mezcal is all about yeah. like smoke in your face, smoke in your face, which is just like such so a, not a silliness. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, not none even of, none of these. Yeah, all of these have a, a very light smoke yeah. in the background. That's in it's there is a light smoke. In, in mm-hmm. all mezcal because they are cooked in a conical oven with yes with, these, with wood but just because they're cooked with wood doesn't mean that it's screaming smoke in your face so none of these are like yeah. you're, you're smoke driven we'll say smoke driven <laughs> but like there is a light smoke in them and the light smokiness mixed with the light herbalness there's so, eh, something there that i feel like it would be nice with some some cheese and crackers and like yeah you're not to sound bougie yeah. but like, well, i just think that there's Gouda, some, yeah some well like like this really has like now that you said that it really does remind me of olives like an olive with um mm. like red pepper in it you know like those okay. little ones okay like it's pimento 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 that's what the red is yeah the red, no? yeah it's not saying it the flavor profile is like that it just reminds me of that like you bite into it and it has like these like you just enjoy it i don't like olives no? at all i don't fuck at with all. olives i don't fuck with olives i mean all. i get it you but know, i see weird. i see where you're going yeah, with yeah. The, in the world yeah you know it's, it's and other earthy, people do like earthy. olives with mixed drinks and martinis cheese, and cheese, cheese. like yeah, all yeah. The, you're certainly all complimentary mm-hmm. flavors because i personally don't like olives you know what? We might have to get some queso next time. You know, we might have to bring okay. a little, okay. like, you know. Okay. We might have to have a switch block. it up. I like that. I like that. I mean, we, like, we're doing some different things. We got mango this we time. Don't, we've done enough tradition shit. We're just down to break through. You know, just find other pairings with it. And um, I mean, ch- you know? cheese and mezcal pairings is common. Common. And a uh, chocolate. Dark really? chocolate, like like Mexican dark some mole chocolate, and shit like, like that, mixed so. with. <laughs> Um, yeah, certainly mole. I mean, mole comes from Oaxaca. You know, mo- mm-hmm. mole is like the penultimate dish of Oaxaca. And Oaxaca is considered the gastronomical capital of uh, Mexico. Damn. Yo, you know what? We got to try to make our own mole, bro. We might make that into a bonus episode or something like that. I like that. I'm you know, a big mole fan. I like the green mole the most, but like, you know, the classic like is delicious as well. Negra. Yeah, it's like the cacao and like yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. they put My in My favorite ship. mole is coloradito. Which one's that? That's the Coke. more uh, orangey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orangey that one's one. good. Yeah, it's yeah. like in the middle. Like you Auburn. Know, like, it's a little so, yeah. sweeter than the negra. It's yeah. not quite as like burnt and chocolatey, mm-hmm. but it's still in that That one's world, good, yeah. You know? It's not chocolatey at all, really, but it has like that like initial like it's more like spice driven and like flavor driven. Yeah. And the mole is like more like earthy. 
There's something like I think I read something. There's like twenty or thirty different types of mole. Jesus. Like if we think of mole, we think of the negro. Yeah, like, yeah. Like that's what yeah, we yeah. think of. Like I mean, the, I think of the green one, but like I really? like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But that's because like you know I I've I have a different. Um, I mean, there's lots of restaurants if you go to like and they have one mole on the on the mes- menu. It's, it's gonna negra. be the negro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I I've, I've the first time I had mole was uh, on Christmas at a Mexican homie's crib. Okay. So like it was like the green mole. And it was super special, and, like, the grandma, like, it was old as a motherfucker. And she was, like, you know, killing it. Everyone was like, you got to try this. You got to try her mole. You got to try her mole. And tasted it. I fucking, three fucking plates, bro. I was like, please. like, <laughs> And, like, you can't you can't get the fucking, uh, you can't get the recipe for that. You know, it's just you something. Need to, uh, you need to take your lady friend on a date to Galagetza. Oh, yeah? To Koreatown, so you can keep a K-Town up in it. Galagetza, OG, um, Oaxacan. I think the original restaurant that brought Oaxacan food to mm-hmm. uh, L.A., and they have this uh, festival of, of mole Damn. where it's like three or four different moles with um, chicken and tortillas. And like, so you make your own like enchiladas and you could with the three, the, like, the coloradita, the negra, the green, and there might be a red, I forget, mm-hmm. the roja. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking good, dude. Their, their mole is crazy. Apparently, it takes all day. It takes a whole day to make a proper mole. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like 12 hours, bro. Mortar and pestle, all those herbs, then make it into a sauce and let the sauce simmer, then cook the food in the sauce. I mean, that's what I was learning when, you know, that Christmas. It was amazing. I was like, God damn. No, but for, we got to like, you know, we're not too bad at cooking ourselves. We're all right. I've actually never uh, ventured into making my own mole. I could be into this. I like this idea. Never even thought about it, but like. I like the idea. You know, like, I'm pretty, we got our sea legs when it comes to mezcal. True. We could keep on, like, moving forward towards this um, Mexican, <laughs> like, you know, cultural uh, renaissance. <laughs> I don't know. Theoretically sucking the dick of Oaxaca. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, yeah, I guess. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said that, but, uh, yeah, I mean, suck today's Oaxacan dick. Let's go. <laughs> Is mezcal the cum of Oaxaca? Whoa! Deep thought. That was actually pretty fucking. Yeah, that was pretty intense. <laughs> so Holy. then, what would be the mole? <laughs> we don't need to go there. We don't. Need to, uh, I think you can draw your own. Wait. So, if the mezcal. <laughs> all right. Let me just do one more. <laughs> is the mezcal? If the mezcal's the come, uh, is agave the balls? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. Just wondering. Totally. Just, you know, and if agave is the ball. I mean, mezcal <laughs> is the nectar of the, gods. the agave, yeah. so it's the cum of the agave. God damn, man. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm We gay didn't even for know that we were I'm, drinking cum all these uh, yeah, months. Yeah. This, uh, this Who aga- knew? I love agave <laughs> skeet. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking walking cum. Skeet, skeet <laughs> in my copita. What the <laughs> fuck? This is how things de-evolve. You yeah, know? Like, devolve as like a If you're here with us at this moment. They were like, so then... open-minded. <laughs> they they were ready to make mole. And now <laughs> we're just like completely... Ah, oh, goddamn. Hey, I mean... If you took it this far, then you're probably cool with what we're talking about. If you just skipped real. ahead and heard this, you might be a little bit weird right now. <laughs> and if you're weird about it, I guarantee you're probably not even from Mexico, bro. So don't even front. Like, <laughs> for real, you need for to real. like go back and just let it ride and like yeah. feel the evolution i mean i would say this shit in front of a real ass any mexican motherfucker because <laughs> no mexican people through my knowledge know how to have a good time they, they know, know about to, the come of agave yeah i mean i'll <laughs> i yeah i guess <laughs> i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask uh, I'm gonna ask them about it yeah but i mean not uh, for real for real. like all the mexican people i know are just hilarious they know how to take a joke and if you're not from there and you're judging us right now you're oh, watching. fucking well. You're like, yo, you should have closed the window Mezcal a talk. long time ago. Mescal. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Mm-hmm. We love when you come to hang out with us. Keep up with the Instagram, the YouTube, Spotify, Spotify. Apple, whatever you fucking digest podcasts on. We're probably mm-hmm. out there. Leave Keep- us a comment. Shoot us a DM. We're checking everything. Like, you know, this is just the hobby for us. We like to hang out. But, like, when you guys, like, talk to us about, like, 
specific parts of the episode that's amazing yes. it's 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 dope man like i appreciate this like in all spectrums this is a journey of flavors yes much yes. love to you my peoples mm-hmm. shout out to Koch. new extra soledad yes very birds good. oh yeah alfred hitchcock Ching. goodbye movie lovers mm-hmm.